name is Mrs. Geisler and I work with the Warren County Soil and Water Conservation District and today we're going to be exploring groundwater and I've brought with me my groundwater model. So get ready to learn where our water comes from and where it goes. The first thing I want to do is to show you the different parts of my model so you can see what I'm talking about. Now this area the front of the model represents underground. So all of this space is underground. Now you'll notice up here, you'll see green, actually they're kitchen scrubbies. These green scrubbies represent vegetation on the surface. In the back, you will see the ocean. Here we go. It's nice and clean right now, but it's not going to be clean for long. So here's the ocean in the back. Now, this aquarium filter right here is rain. I can pull the filter over and now it's raining in the ocean. If I push the filter on top of this surface right here, it's raining on land. Now this part of the model over here is the recharge area. Now recharge is when water is sucked down into the soil. So as it rains on the surface, this is where water sinks down. Now where you have a recharge area, there's always going to be some discharge. So water comes in the underground in the recharge area and water comes up to the surface in the discharge area. Now here I have some wells. Now see these well, this well goes rather deep. This, here's one, two, three wells. A well is just basically it's kind of like sticking a straw in a soda. You just stick a pipe underground and you can suck up water from underneath the ground. Now water that's stored underground is called an aquifer. Where we live in Ohio, we happen to live on top of a couple of really, really big aquifers. Now aquifer is this place underground where there's space between the rock and sand and gravel and there's enough space for water to hang out. And if there's enough water, you can just stick a well down in it and suck water out. Now, when you have more than one well like this, this is called a well field. Now, what I want you to notice is these wells are at different depths. And that's important if you're going to have a well field. This one's a very deep well. Here's kind of a medium well. And here's a rather shallow well. The reason it's a good idea to have wells at different depths is in case you have pollution. And don't worry, I'll show you some pollution later. Now right here I have an underground storage tank. See this little tank underground? This is where things like, um, well usually fuels are stored. Like when you go to a gas station and you get, you know, gasoline out of the, out of the pump, the gas isn't in the pump, it's in an underground storage tank. Here is a septic system. Many of you may have septic systems. A septic system is where wastewater goes. Wastewater is any water that goes down a drain or a toilet and that um, will go into this tank right here. The solid stuff sinks to the bottom and the liquid stuff floats to the top. And eventually it will drain out once, it's, once the enzymes and microbes clean it up a little bit. So we'll explore the septic tank later. Now here I have a little clay, a clay layer right here. I have an aqua tar. Do you see this gray stripe here? This is clay. Clay is rather impermeable. Clay is very, very tightly packed. It's packed together. It's really hard for water to get through it. So water cannot pass through this aquatard. Aquatard means it slows water down. So up here we have, well, here's a lake. Here's another well field. You'll see these are all at different depths also. Now as we move down, notice how the surface angles down. So when you have a slope in the land like that, water can come under pressure from the surface. So that's going to create artesian wells. Um, and it's a spring, you know. It, it's basically when water is under pressure and gets squeezed up to the surface. So right here where this rubber band is shows you where the water table is. Now the water table is just where the water is underground. Um, water tables go up and water tables go down. It all depends on the recharge. So if you get a lot of rain, this water table can go up. If it gets dry for a while, the water table can go down. You can tell this in real life if you have a favorite stream. 
if you have a favorite stream and one day you go by and wow, that stream is really full, you'll know, oh, the water table is high today. If you go by your favorite stream in the summer and it's really low, the water didn't evaporate, it didn't dry out, it's just that the water table is a little bit lower. So that's always moving. Right now our water table is a little bit lower than normal. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about aquifers. I told you that an aquifer was an area underground where there was room to store water. Well, there's a couple of different types of aquifers. The first aquifer I'm going to talk about is the unconfined aquifer. Now this is the aquifer that's above this aquitard right here. Now the unconfined aquifer is under the influence of the surface. That means when things spill up here, it can sink down into this unconfined aquifer. There's nothing to protect it. And we might get pollution in our wells. Let me show you the rest of the groundwater model before we inject some dye. The first thing I want you to notice here, this gray area here, this is bedrock. This is what everything is sitting on top of. And if you notice, there's some fracture lines in this bedrock. You'll see them later when I inject the dye. Now up here, this word here is aquaclude. Aquaclude means water can't get down there. It's really, really, it, it's not gonna go through at all. It's not an aquatard, it's an aquaclude. Right here, we have our confined artesian aquifer. I already told you a little bit about the unconfined aquifer. This confined aquifer means it kinda has an umbrella on top. It's protected. You see this gray part here, remember that's clay, and it's very hard for water to move through clay. So this clay, this aquitard right here, kind of acts like an umbrella and protects the confined aquifer down here. Now, getting ready to inject the dye, and I just wanna point out the different part size of the particles of the soil in my model. Basically, it's gravel. I have pretty large bits of gravel here, and when you have large bits of gravel, that means you have a lot more porosity. Porosity is the area between the rocks and the sand and the gravel. Up here, it, the particles are a little smaller, so there's less room. And here we have sand, where it's even smaller tiny bits and it's kind of packed a little tighter. So, let's add some dye. Now I'm gonna chase it with a little bit of clean water and take a look. Now you can see how the water is moving very quickly through that fractured bedrock because the, these fractures here are like a super highway. There's nothing in the way. The water goes straight out. And if you take a look here, this water is starting to get pushed up a little bit it's going to be pushed up the artesian well. Now the next thing I want to show you is one of the three most common pollutants in Warren County water. Uh, one of them is fertilizer. The other two pollutants are soil and septic. So I want to show you, I'm going to use some green dye here to represent fertilizer and I'm just going to drop it on the grass. So here's our grass, I'm going to drop a little fertilizer up there and we will watch it move and see where it ends up. So I'm going to make it rain a little bit. You can see that the green fertilizer is sort of skipping. Look over here at our lake. We've got fertilizer in the lake. Are you going to go fishing in that lake? Okay, so you can tell now our fertilizer that I put way over here has bounced, 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 ended up in the lake, bounced, 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 it's ended up in the river. So here's the thing about water. It's always on the move. The next thing I want to show you is the underground storage tank. Now I told you that gas stations and businesses that have fleets of vehicles like fire departments and schools with school buses, they might have um, fuel stored underground. Now, the problem with storing fuel underground is, well, it depends on the container it's in, but if it leaks, how will you tell? Now 
Now there are ways to tell if your tank is leaking. If you don't pull out as much gasoline as you put in it, then you're gonna know that went somewhere. But you can see when this stuff leaks out, we're gonna have to watch where it goes. Now when a pollutant moves underground, it kind of moves in this shape. And this shape is called a plume. So you can see this um, fuel right here is starting to move. We're gonna have to keep an eye on that and see where it goes. So let's take a look at the septic tank. Remember I told you septic tank holds wastewater. Wastewater is any water that goes down a drain. It could be your shower, a bathtub, a dishwasher, a washing machine, a sink, a toilet, all of those things are wastewater and they're all going to down go into your own personal wastewater treatment plant if you have a septic tank aware of how to use a septic tank but septic tanks can leak a look at where we are now in the groundwater model you can see that when um, pollution falls on the surface of the earth or or even right underneath in storage tanks or septic tanks that water that polluted water is going to move it's going to move as a plume that moves through the aquifer the next thing I'd like to do is show you what happens when you start removing water from an aquifer when you remove water from an aquifer, more water moves in to take its place. So I have put this tube right here in well number five. And as I track the plunger, you can see I've collected some water. Now I'm going to move the plunger over here to well number four, I mean the well, and let's suck up some water here and see if you can see some polluted water coming right to the mouth of the well. When you think about a well, this is the mouth and this is the head. And if you notice, this plume is attracted right to my well. That's what happens when you remove water from an aquifer. You pull more water in to take its place. And if there's a plume moving through an aquifer, that pollution is going to be attracted to your well. And now we have septic in our well. Now if you notice, I put this well in well number six. Now one thing I want you to notice is this confined aquifer, there's no pollution down here. Remember I told you that this aquitard was protecting this confined aquifer? Look, there's no pollution down here. So this well is safe. And that's why you want to have wells of different depths. In case you get a plume of something coming in a shallow well, turn that one off and go to a deeper well. Now, if you have a large well field and you're withdrawing a lot of water from that aquifer, you can actually reduce the level of the water table. Remember, here's the water table. The water table is filled up to here. Below the water table, everything's wet. That's called the saturation zone. Above the water table, everything's dry. That's the unsaturated zone. But if you pull out a lot of water, you might actually lower the water table to meet the mouth of your well. And that's called a cone of depression. Now, if you look here, and I have pulled out so much water from well number five, I've lowered the aquifer here. What's gonna happen to well number four? Well, it's gonna be dry because there's no water. This is all dry. This is the unsaturated zone. Well, one thing I want you guys to keep in mind as you reflect on this lesson is that anything that falls on the surface of our planet can soak into the aquifer and have an effect on the wells like you saw when we 
sucked up the septic into our wells. So please be careful. Don't spill things on the surface of the planet. That might sink down. You can see that all of this pollution moved all over. We should take a look at the ocean because all of that pollution we put on the planet in the front has ended up in the oceans. All of those water molecules that fall all over, they all want to go to the lowest places on the planet and the lowest places are the ocean. Just like me, all those water drops want to get to the beach. So make sure the water drops that get there are clean. <laughs>